the rest of popular culture has caught up with what 2000 AD was doing 30 years ago. 2000 AD has probably on some level influenced everything I've ever written. The British comic landscape now would be a wasteland without 2000 AD. It's the Sex Pistols being signed to the major label kind of thing, still getting away with it. It can be considered a, a, a British success story. Anyone can make a comic, there's only one 2000 AD. Welcome to Kermit Uncut. There's a new documentary, Future Shock, the story of 2000 AD. It opened briefly in cinemas last Friday and now it's available on DVD. And I want to flag it up because it's really worth checking out, even if, like me, you're not really a comics aficionado. It follows the story of 2000 AD, looks at all its influences and also traces it right back to its roots. And interestingly enough, the documentary starts with action. Now, as I said, I'm not a comics aficionado, but I was one of the people who bought the early editions when it first came out. And I remember just how much fuss Action caused. I remember coming back with a copy of Action and being looked at disapprovingly by my parents having brought this ultra-violent comic into the house. The documentary traces the roots of 2000 AD back to action and then discusses how it came out of the punk milieu of Britain, talks about its political sensibilities, its anarchic sensibility, talks to many of the people involved in writing, drawing, creating and editing 2000 AD throughout its many incarnations. It's a warts and all tale, there's lots of infighting, there's lots of being taken over by people who do not fully understand what the comic's about. but. One of the things that really interested me is it looks at the way in which 2000 AD has had influence on cinema, not just in the obvious adaptations. I mean, we all remember Sylvester Stallone starring in that terrible adaptation of Judge Dredd. I remember years later asking Stallone what was it that he thought was so bad about that film? Why didn't it work? And he said, well, I remember walking out on set wearing that costume and nobody laughed. And I thought, uh-oh, we're in trouble. To which I thought, yeah, you really didn't understand that at all, did you? The documentary also looks at films that were sort of inspired by 2000 AD, whether officially or unofficially. I mean, for example, we hear about Richard Stanley Stanley's Hardware, a film I actually like very much, but which it turns out was pretty much ripped off from the shock comic strip. And then there's discussion of whether or not Robocop is effectively an uncredited adaptation of Judge Dredd. And I think on the basis of what you see in the documentary, it pretty much is. And there's some discussion of whether 28 days later can be said to have a 2000 AD sensibility. And again, I think it's an argument that is strongly made. And then towards the end of the documentary, there's a brief examination of Dread, the second Judge Dread movie, which is infinitely better, but about which I have to say, I was rather lukewarm when it first came out. Although, having just watched the documentary, I'm now inclined to go back and look at Dread again because the way it appears in the documentary, I have to say, it looks like a rather more valid film than I think I gave it credit for. And certainly I've had loads and loads of correspondence from people who are fans of 2000 AD who said, look, you missed that movie. It was much better than you gave it credit for. So check out Future Shock, the story of 2000 AD. It is a really interesting documentary. Owen, oh, if you've got any old copies of Action, hang on to them. They seem valuable. Judgment time. Let's finish this.